Formed in 1913, the Anti-Defamation League was originally founded to fight all forms of anti-Semitism, a very worthwhile cause. And in the modern world, the ADL is now a global organisation committed to fighting all forms of bias and racism. Again, a very worthwhile cause. Although, as we'll see, when the ADL say racism, they mean white supremacy. They will not acknowledge that anyone who doesn't have the same colour skin as me is capable of judging another human because their skin is not the same as their own. And recently, the ADL published a list of over 200 hate symbols, apparently on public display, hiding in plain sight, as it were. My question is this. I'm going to go through a few of these apparent hate symbols. Are they really hate symbols? Or is this the modern trend of being offended for the sake of it? Of deciding something is hateful and then working backwards? Because if this is the case, apparently now, in 2023, numbers are a form of white supremacy. Like many people, one of the last things I do before I go to sleep is I put my mobile phone on charge. So in the morning, when I lift it up, in the top right hand corner, the battery symbol is reading 100%. But saying 100% apparently is a form of white supremacy. The reasoning behind this is there are some white supremacists who apparently say, I am 100% white. That doesn't make 100% a racist term of its own right. And more to the point here, although white supremacy is vile, what if the white supremacists are actually stating facts? Because here's the issue. For me, I'm a white guy, but I don't give it all that. But I am 100% white. And I know that because a few years ago, I did the whole ancestry DNA thing. And it turns out my historic DNA is Anglo-Irish and also comes from Sweden, Holland and Germany. Historically, all of those countries were white. That doesn't make me a card carrying racist. Before I continue, I urge you, please be seated and prepare yourself for the vile racism I'm about to spew forth. Ready? 12. Yes, the number 12 is apparently a form of white supremacy. Because using, I was going to say logic, I'm using that term extremely lightly. If we assign numerical values to each of the letters of the alphabet, A being 1, B being 2, and so forth, 12 would read AB, which apparently is a secret code for Aryan Brotherhood. Or 12 might just be the number that comes after 11. Next, unlucky for some, 13. Yes, 13 is also apparently a covert way to convey white supremacy. I mean, these people must get fucking triggered if they ever play bingo. But the thinking with this is now using the same code, it would read AC, apparently a secret code for Aryan Circle. Is this a bit of a stretch? Next up, rather predictably, 14. Yes, 14 is also linked to white supremacy. The reasoning behind this is there's a sentence, something to do with racial purity, which has 14 words in it. I couldn't be bothered to write it down. But using this logic, if you construct a sentence using 14 words, you are a evil fucking racist. Mercifully, we skip a few numbers until we get to 18. Again, on the numerical code, this would be AH, standing for Adolf Hitler. Now, in the report, they cite the British neo-Nazi group Combat 18, and that's true. They were called Combat 18, Combat Adolf Hitler. They were vile racists. But here's the thing. I can't remember hearing of anything about Combat 18 for a good 20 years. And not only that, my dad's initials are AH. I'm fairly certain he's never been the German Chancellor, the Führer, or head of the Third Reich. We'll skip forward and stop this time at the number 88. HH. This one is well known. HH Heil Hitler. But once again, this doesn't actually mean that the number itself is racist. 88 is very necessary if you want to count to say 89. Or if we go along with this theory, shall we call it? If you are 35 years old, you were born in 1988. You fascist bastard. Next up, the number 109. And to be honest, I do associate that with Nazi Germany. I think of the BF-109 Messerschmitt, a glorious 
fighter plane. But apparently white supremacists use the code 109 because historically that's how many countries the Jews have been expelled from. That's as maybe. Once again though, the number 109 of itself isn't racist or hateful because it's a number. I started this video mentioning 100%. How about 9%? That's also apparently racist because it's used to refer to the 9% of the world's population who are white. Only 9%? That makes me an ethnic minority. Where's my sodding reparations? Before anyone starts banging on about the African or transatlantic slave trade. Firstly, African pirates abducted over a million white Europeans to sell into slavery. These people were abducted. They weren't bought. And when it comes to the transatlantic slave trade, there's this popular myth, I guess, that it was perpetuated by white people running around the African savannah with large butterfly nets. Whereas, in fact, what happened was the slave trade had been going on for centuries. The slave traders, they bought their slaves from other Africans. The African slave trade was begun by the Africans and it was ended by the British. Because long after slavery had been banned throughout the British Empire, there was one tribe, the Dahomey tribe, who wanted to keep the trade going. And when they refused, the British did what we used to do best. Turned up in our ships and shelled the shit out of them. The last of the numbers we'll look at are 1352 and 1390. And I would have thought they were dates of historical events, but no. These are used by American white supremacists to refer to African Americans forming 13% of the American population, but being responsible for 52% of murders and 90% of interracial crime. So although it is likely that anyone quoting those two numbers is actually a white supremacist, that doesn't take away that this is empirical data. Essentially, the truth does not make you the grand wizard of the KKK. Other things that apparently represent white supremacy? Let's begin with the Celtic cross, also known as Odin's cross in Scandinavia. And there's some thinking that because during World War II, Norwegian divisions of the Waffen SS wore this as their insignia, that doesn't make the Celtic Cross racist because it's been around long before the Nazis, long before the transatlantic slave trade. In fact, you'll see these dotted all over the United Kingdom. To me, what it actually feels like is anything which can be associated with whiteness must therefore be inherently racist, which in itself I'd argue is a form of racism. How about the phrase, it's okay to be white? Now this is a strange one because it started as a practical joke, as a wind up. On 4chan, on one of the message boards, someone suggested, why don't we print some flyers with the slogan, it's okay to be white and see how long it takes far left liberals to think it's something to do with white supremacy. Well, we know now it was published in a report in 2023. How about this, the okay hand gesture? Apparently, that is also linked to white supremacy. It's meant to represent a W and a P standing for white power. Once again, this one started as a joke in 2017. Someone suggested saying that that's what the OK symbol actually signifies, white power. It actually comes from scuba diving, where you check that your dive buddy has sufficient oxygen. Not letting your friend suffocate to death is apparently now racism. Next, we have what's known as the hammerskin arm gesture. The Hammerskins are a neo-Nazi group from the USA and they cross their arms over their chest. That's their symbol. However, the issue is the exact same gesture is used by Black Panther in the Marvel films. Now, I'm fairly certain that Black Panther is not a white supremacist. In fact, the Marvel films are based on fantasy. Of course, imagine an African country surviving without foreign aid. And we have the very vague German phrases. Yes, using German phrases is a form of white supremacy, apparently. That's a real fucker if you happen to be German. Or what about when there's no English equivalent, a word like schadenfreude? Or how about Uber? You know, Uber, the taxi firm that comes with a free rapist. Now, is that a form of white supremacy? Because to date, I've never seen an Uber driver who's the same colour as me. And I'm a fan of Rammstein, the German heavy metal band. I had no idea it meant I was a card-carrying Nazi. Then there are some more obvious things on the list of hate symbols. 
starting with the Confederate flag. But again, I would say you have to take this in context because I'm a Brit. I don't view that flag and think of the American Civil War. Because of my age, I think of General Lee, not General Robert E. Lee, the General Lee, the 1969 Dodge Charger from the Dukes of Hazard. And I'm not thinking of racism, I think of the good old boys, Bo and Luke, roaring around Hazard County, the only place on earth where every hedge has a ramp built into it. And finally, included on the list, two very obvious racist symbols. If anyone does not know that these are associated with white supremacy, I wouldn't let them vote, or drive, or feed themselves. Because first up, we have the death's head. Now, this is the cap badge of the SS. I was going to use the German name, but of course, if I use any German phrases, that then means I'm a racist. And finally, this, the flag of the Nazi party. These are hate symbols which are meant to be hiding in plain sight. Who the merry fuck has got that flying from their house and doesn't think it might land them in the shit? So let's put some of these things together. At present, Disgruntled Towers is having some work done on it. So let's create a scenario. Let's say the painter and decorator approaches me and asks, what colour do you want the ceilings doing? And I reply, white, all white, 100%, okay? I then get into my German car, which is an Audi, but it's based on a Volkswagen, sorry, a Volkswagen, can't use the German pronunciation. And as I'm driving along, I listen to the news where they discuss crime statistics in the USA based on race. I then put on, say, classic rock to listen to the Scorpions from Germany, and then onto a country station, as if I've got a country station saved in my car radio, to listen to Waylon Jennings, who recorded the theme for The Dukes of Hazard. When I park up, I go into a Chinese takeaway, I look at the menu and order a 13, a 14, an 18 and an 88. Does that make me a far-right white supremacist nut job, or is it all just fucking coincidence? Of course, racism in all its forms is utterly vile, but for me, most of that is a bit of a stretch. I mean, yeah, admittedly, if you see a guy waving a flag with a swastika, or swastika, to use the English pronunciation, that guy will be a racist. But if someone arranges to meet you at 12 o'clock, it means they want to meet you at midday, not come and meet me and become part of the Aryan Brotherhood. As ever, thanks for watching.